its majestic sight can clearly be seen even from space. Bolivia, South America, tucked among the Andes mountain range, a white carpet. Can you see it? These are the Uyuni salt flats, the great lands of pure white salt. Yes, here, spreading 120 kilometers east and west and 100 kilometers from north to south. Now that's big, don't you think? Coming back to Earth, a world of pure white that goes on forever and ever. Have you ever seen such a sight? Salt, 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 as far as the eye can see. Today, we treat you to the fantastic world of a wonderland called Uyuni. Emiri will be your fellow traveler. I never knew white was so blinding. <laughs> wow. Salt isn't the only attraction here at Uyuni. Enjoy the mirage that floats above the horizon. If you're lucky, you might even spot flamingos in flight. And what really steals the show is the occasional rainfall. Rain turns this entire area of dry salt into a magical world in an instant. A gigantic mirror. Rainwater collects and forms a thin mask on the surface of the sand to reflect the entire sky. The sand flat that has transformed into a mirror blend with the heavens as one. Moment by moment, changing expressions. A world of wonder created by nature. Sit back, relax, and enjoy everything the Uyuni has to offer. Three flights, I have come halfway around the world from Japan, all the way to Bolivia. I'm in La Paz, the capital of Bolivia, right now. From here, I will be heading towards the Uyuni Salt Flats by car. Here's the route of your journey. The Uyuni salt flats are 500 kilometers south of La Paz. One road cuts through the Andes, taking you to the eastern edge of Uyuni in 12 hours. Eight a.m. Are you ready? Let's go. Just a quick drive out of town. Or so we thought. Rush hour.
Is there always this much traffic? Oh, yes. Finally, we're out of the city. Look at that view. We're driving along the highlands forever and ever, 3,900 meters above sea level. What are those? Deer? That's a family of Vicuña. Not much of an opportunity to see these creatures in Japan. The Vicuña is a type of camel. It's fur so smooth that in the Inca days, people used to call them animals bearing the hair of God. The road is getting worse as we go along. We have been on the road for roughly nine hours. As we get closer to the sand flats, I see the land drying up. Trees and grass, too, are thinning out. Five hundred kilometers out of La Paz, we're almost there. The Ayune salt flats are over there. Over there? I can't tell. There it is. See the white across the horizon? That's a uni. We're at the very eastern edge of the salt flats. We're here. Everything I see here is part of the salt flats? Everything that looks white. It's all salt. For as far as I can see, pure white. A world made of salt. I had never seen anything so miraculous. Wow, it, it looks like snow, but it's not cold. Seems strange. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. I'm wearing long sleeves to protect myself from the sun. The reflected light is quite intense. It's all salt. I touched the ground by my feet, and it was rock hard. It's really hard. Not powdery at all, like you'd imagine. It makes you wonder, is this really salt? If I taste some, will it make me sick? It's very, very salty. This is salt. There's no doubt about it. It was a shock at first. I was stunned by this vast, mysterious land of salt. But once I started getting used to nothing but salt, a relaxing feeling came over me, like I'd never felt before. Now that you've taken a good look at the pure white land of salt, we'd like to move along. The next portion of your journey is a drive across the salt that spreads 120 kilometers east-west by 100 kilometers north to south. We drove any which way we wanted. With nothing around, I can't tell how fast we're going. 
The speedometer shows almost 100 kilometers. In Japan, that's the highest maximum speed limit on the expressway. The drive was so smooth, and it was like having a very wide highway all to myself. Just as I was enjoying the ride, as if flying through the sky, I saw something completely unexpected. A bus! What is a bus doing here? How strange! Actually, it was a commuter bus connecting villages nearby. For the locals, the Uyuni is a road that they could not live without. It's amazing that these people can drive through this white mass of salt without getting lost. There are no signs anywhere. But they know better. Look carefully at the surface. You can see faint tire marks. And over the horizon, the small figure of a mountain peak. These work as landmarks. Young lady. Do you see them? Yes. They're birds. A flock of flamingos. Apparently, flamingos are the only living beings in the salt flats. in the watery areas near the salt flats, but from time to time come to visit Uyuni, where there is no risk of being hunted by natural enemies. Driving further along, I began to see a figure up ahead in the distance. A black figure floating above the white horizon. In the air. In fact, it was a mirage. The Uyuni salt flats climate is dry, like a desert. For that reason, mirages like this are quite common. We decided to drive towards the mirage. We can see it in front of us, but we're not getting any closer. We continued driving, but the mirage kept moving back away from us. Then, after a while, a strange phenomenon. The mirage started to come closer. But that was because what was thought to be a mirage was actually a small hill. This hill is located in the center of the Uyuni salt flats. Because it looks like a floating island on the white lands, it is called Inga Huasi Island. 
It's a very popular spot for tourists. Climbing up to the top, there is a lookout commanding a 360 degree view. Not much of a variety in scenery, however. There are many cacti growing on this island. Some grow as tall as 10 meters, and some are almost 1,000 years old. Inca Huasi Island also serves as an oasis for drivers enjoying the salt flats. There's an interesting form of entertainment popular among travelers taking a break. That's a good one. Snapshots for souvenirs. <laughs> You can take some curious photos with this backdrop that gives you no sense of distance. Like this one. It looks like someone is standing on a finger. See that? This one is good. Three people on a dish. Looks like fun. So where did all this salt come from anyway? The answer is the Andes Mountains. The Andes mountain range prominently lines the salt flats on the east and on the west. These 6,000 meter high mountains obstruct the rain clouds, making this area absolutely dry. This mechanism attracts salt. This area was originally a huge valley. The rain that fell on the Andes Mountains collected in the valley, soaking up and carrying all the minerals and salt from the Great Lands. With no place to run off into, the rain sat here to be dried up in the desert climate, leaving only salt. The rain brought salt and dried up. This continued for hundreds of thousands of years, each time bringing just a little bit of salt and minerals to the valley. As time went on, the continental crevices were buried and the area became a vast, smooth, flat land of salt. A sky view of the Uyuni Salt Flats. Inca Huasi Island floats in the center. In fact, there is a big mountain buried underneath. And each time it rains in the Andes, more salt is brought here, even today. In the evening, the sky suddenly began to change color. Far away, under a thick rain cloud, what looks like white threads? That's rain.
petals are beginning to develop on the dry salt. The puddles are spreading as if to cover the land of salt. We decided to go to a nearby hotel to take cover for a while. The manager, Maria, came out to greet us. This is salt, isn't it? This? It's all salt. A hotel made of salt? The walls are blocks of salt. Salt tiles line the floors. Oh look, how cute. These are all made from salt too, aren't they? The table too. Even this bird, everything. How cute. Maria showed us the rooms, too. Of course, the pillows and mattresses weren't made of salt. Maria told us that we would be treated to a dreamlike view tomorrow. A dreamlike view? Compared to the average year, well, we haven't had much rain this year, but I must say, you are very fortunate. Oh, wow. She showed me a picture. The salt flats were covered in a layer of water, reflecting the sky like a mirror. I would love to see that. I want to stand right there. Apparently, the miracle doesn't stop there. Beetle, it's even more magical at night. The mirror reflects the stars. It's truly wonderful. So you're saying it feels like being completely surrounded by stars? I must see this before I leave. I woke up to a fine morning. It's a clear blue sky. Mm. Sure enough, I can see clouds reflected in areas where there's a film of water. But I want to see something like yesterday's photo. Oh, wait a minute. This might be good. Wow, it's incredible. Oh. Look. Yesterday's rain took away the whiteness of the salt lands. The water on the surface spreads way out to the horizon. And there, mirrored in the reflection was a sky, just like I had seen in the picture. What an incredible feeling, like I was floating. I 
I'm truly lost for words. All I can say is this is incredible. The water is spread out over such a large area, so it's quite shallow. See? It doesn't even cover my hand. The water was only one centimeter deep. The water has made a thin veil all across the land of salt that seemed to extend for eternity. Because it's so shallow, the wind doesn't cause it to ripple at all. This is a land of magic. Now why does the rain that fell in Uyuni spread out thinly like this, without flowing anywhere? That's because these salt flats are perfectly flat. This is the flattest place on Earth. There was a woman who conducted a careful survey of this geography in 2002. It was geophysicist Dr. Helen Fricker. Using a NASA satellite, she aimed laser beams at the salt flats to study the topography in detail. She also came on site and measured the altitude in several thousand locations, accurate to within one centimeter. As a result, she was able to assess the accurate shape of the land. It's very flat. Um, the total range in elevation from um, the minimum to the maximum um, elevation that we surveyed with our GPS was about half a meter, 50 centimeters. Um, and we, um, yeah, we, we saw that there was a slight tilt to the surface, mainly because of the, the geoid. I think that the Saladio Uni is the largest, flattest surface um, on the Earth. Because it's the flattest place on Earth, water can spread like a veil and the salt flats turn themselves into a mirror. Let's look at this wonderful view some more. This is what it looks like when a car drives over it. It's as if the car is flying through the clouds. Kolchani, a village at the eastern edge of the flats. This is Kolchani. Population 600. There is not much here except for a few shops for the tourists. But it is one of the bigger villages in the area. The people here make their living selling salt. The salt of Uyuni is full of minerals. The taste is good as well, making it popular not only within Bolivia, but in restaurants all over the world. They sell it for about 15 cents per bag. I decided to go to Kolchani and learn how to dig for salt. This is Mr. Teodoro Corque. He has been digging for salt for 50 years, an expert. First, 
First, you scrape the surface to get tiny pieces. Isn't the water a nuisance? No, no, it's better when there's water. Dry salt is more difficult to work with. Much easier, much easier. The surface is soft, but underneath it's quite hard. I can get this much, no problem. I can scrape the surface, but under that it's, it's too hard. I can't get at it. <laughs> then the salt is crushed and piles are made. But we're at 3,600 meters above sea level. I don't normally get tired after only this much movement. Uh, see? This one's starting to look like a pile too. Moisture in the pile of salt drops to the bottom and the pile slowly dries out. After it's left out for one night to dry, it is put onto a truck and delivered to the village. One mountain of salt brings in revenue of 70 cents. It's not an easy job. While I was fooling around scraping the surface of the salt, I found something interesting. There are a lot of crystal-like things. These crystals of salt are quite irregular in shape. They look like a, a step pyramid. This is weird. I wonder how this happens. The salt crystals of the Uyuni are quite unique. Most salt crystals look like small dice. This crystal, though, is pretty big and shaped like a pyramid. Salt water welling up to fill a groove that was just dug out. The water naturally evaporates and only salt remains. That salt fills the groove, and that is when the pyramid-shaped crystals of salt are formed. Let's take a look at how that happens. A few days after a groove is formed, the dirt that came up with the salt water sinks, making the salt water clear. You can see salt crystals on the surface. From under the water's surface, you can see that they are shaped like pyramids. The pyramid-shaped crystals on the surface slowly settle like falling snow. Filling the groove a little at a time. Mm -hmm. 
Normally with salt water, when crystals form at the surface, they sink immediately. On the other hand, the salt water in Uyuni includes plenty of calcium, magnesium, and other minerals other than salt. The density makes the water buoyant, which is why the crystals stay floating. Other crystals start to form around already formed crystals, and soon they take on the shape of a pyramid. Once they reach a certain weight, they sink. The reason Uyuni salt crystals look like jewels is because the salt water is rich in minerals that the rain carried from the Andes. patterns have developed. This is made by salt water that had come up through the cracks in the dried salt and then dried up. This is what happens on the salt flats when it doesn't rain. This pattern gradually extends throughout the flats. two more days before I go back to Japan. At this rate, I may not be able to see the mirrored reflection of the stars. I heard that a festival was going to be held at a village at the foot of Mount Tunupa called Tahua. It was going to be a rain dance. I wasn't going to miss this. This rain dance festival is held every year when rainy season comes. It has been held ever since way back in the days of the Inca. There has been very little rain this rainy season. The villagers dance and walk through the village as they pray to the gods of the Andes. They do this so that the earth god will let it rain. They showed me how I'm supposed to spill spirits onto the ground before drinking it. This is wine! The men are playing Bolivian Tarka flutes to call in the rain clouds. With so many people calling for them, the rain clouds are bound to come. I hope they do. Around four hours after the festival started, It began to rain. Oh, rain! The rain has really come! When you play this flute, it rains. The rain came, didn't it? You got wet, didn't you? The rain came because I played the flute. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that 
It's too hard. My heart's gonna fall out. It rained all night and into the morning. I still couldn't be sure. This rain would have to stop by night, and then the skies would have to clear for a mirror to reflect the stars. In the afternoon, the rain suddenly came to a stop, creating that mirrored world again. Well, I think it's perfect. Shallow and widespread. Now, I just had to wait for starry skies. But really, I could never get used to the beauty of this world in a mirror. It takes my breath away. I decided to remain here and wait for nightfall. It seemed to take forever. And finally, it became dark. This is amazing! <gasps> there are too many stars. I can't figure out the constellations. It's like pieces of something thrown about, scattered everywhere. And they're even down below. Finally, what I had been waiting for. A sky absolutely filled with stars and another starry sky under my feet. Too bad the light from the stars was not bright enough to relay it to you on the television. It's like there are countless stars all around you. You can't actually get close to them, but they're all around you. And it's as if you can just reach out your hand and touch them. But you'd like to see what it was like, wouldn't you? Well, we were able to capture the scene with a still camera. Twelve hundred photos were taken consecutively and then all put together. Enjoy! At the very end of my journey, my wish came true. The mirrored image of the starry skies was a miracle, way beyond my imagination.
Uyuni Salt Flats present. Emiri was lucky enough to experience this in its entirety with her very own eyes. After a quick rainy season, a long, long dry season with absolutely no rain awaits. The miraculous mirror of the sky created by the rain falling on the pure white flatlands of salt, is visible only for a very short time. <laughs> <laughs> 